Lori, welcome to Great Practice, Great Life. You are a instrumental part of our team. You are a incredible practice advisor and incredible influence in our community and um, have always been a rock star. So I've been dying to get you on the podcast. So thanks for being here. I am very honored to be here, Steve, and I've really enjoyed all the work that you've been doing on this podcast and all the great uh, guests that you've had. And hopefully I can be as, uh, as valuable as the others you've showcased. Well, you know, as long as you can do better than Valerie, I think, I think that's an <laughs> easy benchmark. <laughs> hopefully she'll never hear this podcast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, seriously, welcome. So I want to tell a story about you if you're okay. All right. All right. So I met you, I think, 18 years ago. Ish. Yeah. I Ish. So, and you were one of the, and it's one of the things I've been um, hiring and trying to recruit talented people to work in whatever enterprise, nonprofit, whatever project I got going my entire career. Right. And I met you and it was outside the Alamo, right? Antonio, yeah. Yeah, in San Antonio. And you came up to me and introduced yourself and you were kind, considerate, thoughtful. And I was with a group of people, which I do not like to socialize. So I was with a group of people and you made me feel welcome. And within about 15 minutes, I had made the decision that at some point in my life, I was going to have you part of my team. And I had made that decision within 15 minutes. And, and it took 17 years, more or less. Uh, I followed your career. I paid attention to everything you're doing. I've stayed in relationship with you with the hope that one day I could persuade you to join our team, which I did. So for me, you joining our team is a huge achievement for me personally, because I, I just think you're remarkable. I think you're a rock star. And there are three things I want to talk about that you do very, very well. Um, and let's talk about the first thing that I think you do exceptionally well. You are a hardworking mom, mm -hmm. married sports enthusiast, but you are doing something that all of our clients are doing, which is balancing life in a professional career. So talk to me about just for a few minutes, how you do that. Like, how do you think about that? How do you make that work in your life? Well, it's about balance, certainly something that we all strive for and uh, something that sometimes seems elusive, I think, for most. Um, it certainly has felt very elusive for me at certain points in my career. Um, but from a very young age, I was determined to, to make something and do something. And so I think that fueled um, the work ethic, the passion. Uh, and I never had a clear definition for what that meant or what that was going to look like. I just knew I wanted to achieve success. And so I wanted to, you know, climb ladders. I knew I wanted to be in the business world. And, and I knew I wanted to make an impact both with the individuals that I worked with or worked for and the organization I was a part of. Um, I grew up with parents who, blue collar workers, very strong work ethic, but they also instilled the importance of making your mark, right? You, you got into an organization, you demonstrated your value, you showed loyalty and dedication, uh, and, and you made your impact. And that's something that my parents um, kind of you know, imparted on me, whether they consciously or unconsciously did that through a lot of um, the, the years in which they were raising me. And so I was, I was determined to do something. Um, my, my path wasn't necessarily traditional, um, but I knew from a young age that in, in the era in which I was coming into the workplace, just having an associate's degree or just having a bachelor's degree wasn't going to be enough either. And so I was determined to go on and get my, my master's uh, degree and make sure that I had some um, differentiation from those that just had, you know, an, an undergraduate degree. And I did all of that before having my family. And so I really feel like, yes, there was a lot of um, balance and, uh, and difficulty because I was traveling and I was working full time while working on my studies. Um, but I also had the opportunity to kind of do that for the children came along. And thank goodness, because <laughs> yeah. that creates a whole new dynamic 
And, uh, and, and the uh, ability now is, you know, to be able to put studies on the side, uh, formal studies anyway, um, while, while still trying to figure out. And parenting is on the job training. And I love when I get to work with attorneys and other professionals who also have children because there's so much on how we parent and how we run our household that correlate with leadership and managing teams and, uh, and running a business as well. One of the challenges as a, as a prax advisor, because you're coaching and encouraging others, is that you got your own challenges you bring to party, right? So let's just talk about those challenges for men. So when you think about your challenges as a prax advisor, um, what do you think the three biggest challenges you have that you have to deal with? I would say the first one is engaging clients. You know, I mean, you always have to work to build rapport with the the individual, certainly, and kind of get that relationship initiated. Um, but the engagement, um, when you have maybe a resistant uh, attorney or an, uh, a resistant business owners, um, because again, I can be optimistic, I can be supportive, I can, I can do um, what I need to do on my end. But as I, I share with my clients often, the heavy lifting really falls on them. And so, you know, if they don't fully commit, they don't put in the necessary effort, um, they're not, you know, kind of connecting the dots from one session to the next and, and kind of um, following the roadmap that we're working to develop, that can be frustrating, right? Because again, I know their potential is there. I know with just minor adjustment, they could see some profound changes or differences um, and, and work towards um, completing their goal. But, uh, you know, ultimately, I can't want it more than they do. Um, and I think the other um, piece of it is um, the 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 there's a there's a degree of challenge that I have to apply to the work that I do. Right, I have to challenge their thinking, their mindset, their um, their aversion to risk, perhaps um, uh, their um, their fears and hesitancies over hiring, over spending, over making changes and implementation. Uh, and so sometimes, you know, they might prefer to stay in that comfort zone or they might prefer to, you know, not have me challenge them on certain things. And, uh, and, and, and that being pushed outside their comfort zone, um, I think is part of the process. It's part of the growth. It's the necessity. But for some individual, we get to that uncomfortable, awkward point of it. And, uh, and, and we waver or we, we jump to something else because this over here got too, too uncomfortable, uh, too quickly. And, uh, and that's where, you know, we're actually, you know, whether we're working with a coach or working on goals, whatever it is, um, as uh, I'm sure others have heard, it's when you get to that uncomfortable, awkward place that you're actually, you know, making a difference and making real change. So let me ask you this. Um, what are your favorite type of clients? So we talk about challenge. If you say, okay, these are my favorites. Give me one of these. Give me a couple of these. I'm a happy, happy coach. What yeah. What are your favorites? Yeah, certainly anyone who's coming with a degree of excitement for, uh, they have hope, they have a commitment, um, they, they see value in that partnership. I think that's really important at the gate. And so, you know, obviously we would hope and anticipate that that's the reality um, for all of our engagements, but it really is the fulfilling piece. And in this being a collaborative effort between myself and, and the individual, because again, there's so much that could be accomplished. Um, but the more enthusiasm and more positive outlook and, and the growth mindset that they have coming into this, we're, we're going to be destined to um, to accomplish things more quickly and, and and move further down the path, certainly. But in the, the vein of like what types of um, challenges or what types of areas I like supporting um, attorneys in, I, I particularly really enjoy anything around and related to processes of systemization. I think this is one of the areas that um, can significantly impact um, a practice in, in a positive way um, with, again, the minor tweaks and, and systems and processes are everything from, you know, leveraging technology and automation to how the work gets done and how to train and onboard new team members and how to follow up with clients and how to do the marketing. So we dissect every aspect of the business. There should be a process and a system associated with that. Um, I love when I get to uh, support team dynamics, whether that hiring, um, terminating, uh, you know, training, onboarding, and developing plan for successful implementation of two new uh, team members. Um, and I really uh, I love when there's conflict involved because the reality of it is 
any of the attorneys that we work with that have team members have conflicts because it's, um, it's a difficulty managing people. And many of these attorneys are not born managers, not born leaders. They are technicians and they'd much rather be practicing the laws than dealing with HR uh, situations or aiding in um, uh, communication strategies with their team. And so I get to be a, a completely objective third party person in that, help them shape those conversations, help them see through um, the various different perspectives and aid them in being more successful in their communication um, tactics. And that's really fun. And I would say the last piece is I, I enjoy working with uh, groups that are individuals and groups that are looking to identify an exit plan or a succession strategy for their practice. Communication piece is very interesting okay. because this is the one that I think as we're talking about this, and it's one thing that as you're listening to the podcast, it's probably the biggest blind spot. I always joke that lawyers are lions in the courtroom and lambs in the office. Mm -hmm. And the inability to learn, it really is an inability at first, to learn how to communicate to your team, to be clear on expectations, Same. to take time to communicate fully, train about the communication, um, I think is actually the most invisible right leveraging and scaling up skill. Mm -hmm. So as I look at the lawyers that are running, you know, a couple hundred teams, you know, 30 or 40 teams. Um, and I look at a lawyer who's struggling with two or three people on their team. The one consistent, there's two consistent themes on that. One is their ability to be clear about their own focus and be planning and focusing their time. But the other thing is their ability to focus and communicate to their team in an effective, efficient, empowering way. And that that is in itself an elusive skill. It is. It is. And, and you said blind spot, and that's really um, a, a great way to, to categorize this because the way that we are programmed, especially without any outside influence or particular training in these areas, is to assume that everyone should be just like we are. And, and we know when we say it out loud, that, out loud like that, that it just sounds ridiculous and just sounds silly. But in, inherently or you know, subconsciously, it's how we go into the world. If everyone would just talk like we talk, say what we say, do what we do, do it how we do it, uh, act the way that we would act, this world would just be so much easier, right? Um, so the, the more um, quickly we can get to kind of breaking down the reality that that is not reality, and, um, and start identifying how to better understand individuals, um, the more effective and successful we'll be because we have to communicate. You know, every one of the attorneys that we work with, Steve, regardless of their practice area, is in the people business. And if they're, if they're growing their business at all, they're going to rely heavily on the human resources in their practice to leverage and to grow their business. And so they've got to become effective at communication, but we don't communicate clearly enough. And when we think we too, um, that's kind of the biggest hurdle right there. But the other piece of conflict, I think sometimes we avoid the communication, we avoid setting the expectations, we avoid the follow-up, uh, things of that nature, because we don't want to ruffle feathers. We don't want to create an awkward uh, experience for them, uh, especially not for ourselves. And so we avoid it at all costs. And when we avoid conflict, all we're doing is creating a, a more toxic and difficult work environment.